So, hello everyone. Today I will present our system called Oculi, which extends mobile interaction to nearby surfaces via visible light sensing. This work is done in cooperation with George Tabor, Jia Liang Zhang, and Professor Xin Yu Zhang. So currently, touch is a dominant mode of mobile interaction. However, as you probably already noticed that, it is not always very uh, effective. The input controls can take a large area on the screen, and yet it is still very hard to use. There are several reasons behind this problem. First of all, the screen is multiplexed between display and input, which means that input will waste precious display area. This also leads to devices with larger and larger screens and with higher energy consumptions. Also, the on-screen on input can be very hard to use because the user's finger will cover the display and the block the visual feedback. Also, the input area depends on device size, which means this kind of mode of, of interaction is infeasible on emerging wearable or IoT devices since they can have very tiny sizes. These problems can be naturally solved, solved if we separate display and input services and use the area surrounding the mobile device as the input surface. Uh, this problem can be solved with passive wireless sensing since it does not require instrument, in, instrumentation on the user or the service. So previously there has been various e efforts done in the passive wireless sensing. There are attempts done in the RF and the acoustic channel. However, these channels are not very deterministic and this le led to many problems. There are also work done in the visible light channel, which provides uh, deterministic channel characteristics. However, there are still various drawbacks. Uh, for example, we have side side, with, which uses an array of LED and PD pairs to tell which beam is being cut by the user's finger, thus telling, telling the position of the user's finger. However, this solution is energy is energy hungry and cumbersome because it requires, requires ma many LED and PD pairs. Also, computer vision is a very popular method uh, in the work such as mouseless and uh, many, many so-called laser, project laser projection keyboards. However, this method requires heavy computation and uh, bulky camera module, none of which fits devices with tiny sizes. Also, the machine learning method has potential to reduce the number of sensors. Uh, however, they require excessive runtime training. Sometimes they can last up to a few minutes, which makes the system quite impractical. To avoid these drawbacks, we, pro we propose to use the LED and PD pairs in a different way. The visible light channel contains no face information, so the conventional AOA or TDOA method can be very hard to implement. However, the amplitude is still fine grained and deterministic, which means if we have a fine grain model, we can enable accurate and reliable local localization. Also, unlike the simple finger blocking beam model, a fine grained propagation model can enable lightweight localization since it will allow us to sense only two channels to get a 2D, to, 2D location, rather than sensing many channels. So essentially, we only need two light sensors and one light source, and uh, this is basically how Okuli works. As an overview of Okuli, it has one LED, which illu illuminates the user's finger in the working area. The finger reflects the light through two different channels into two PD is separate by, separated by distance. By, analyze, by analyzing the received signal strengths from these two, two PDs, we can compute the location of the user's finger. So Oculi has uh, several designs to help achieve accurate localization. First, we realize that light propagates in 3D spaces. However, we only want 2D local, location information and we want to limit light in the 2D surface. So this leads to light grooming or 
limiting the vertical field of view of the light. This eliminates interference from outside of the surface, such as the light reflected from the user's hand rather than finger, which can change quite a lot depending on user's hand posture. Light in production, the light grooming can be done with tiny lenses attached to LED, LED and PDs, and the commercial components uh, already have this. However, the profile does not suit our needs. So for fast pro prototyping, we use the 3D printed shroud, which has narrow slits, between, narrow slits in front of each PD, which limits the vertical field of view. As a result, we can say that the vertical field of view is reduced from about 45 degrees to much less than 10 degrees, which achieves the goal of light grooming. Meanwhile, the horizontal FOV is, remain, is mostly unchanged by the shroud. This is favorable because we want a large working area and uh, thus a large horizontal field of view. We also need the fine-grained channel model to achieve localization. We first realized that the received signal is affected by multiple factors multiplied, uh, multiplied together. There are ones that are constant throughout time, such as the angular response of the PD and the LED. This, these factors can be measured during one-time factory calibration. However, there are other factors as well, such as the propagation loss from the LED to the finger and the finger to the PD. This prop propagation loss depends on the distance between the LED and the finger and the finger and the PD and thus is dependent on the position of the finger. Also, finger's reflectivity can change, uh, can change according to the angle between the incident and the reflective, reflective beam. This also depends on the finger's position. So the model, model has to calculate these variant parts. So for the path loss, there is a well-known inverse square law. However, it doesn't work well here because the light does not only propagate in the 2D space. When, when the finger moves away from the PD, actually more and more and more and more area of the finger becomes visible to the PD. The model needs to compensate for this factor by using an inverse linear regime rather than an inverse square run, since the area, area visible to the PD is in, pro in proportion with the distance. Also, we find that the finger's reflectivity can be quite hard to characterize. So we decided that we decided to approximate the cross-section cross of the finger with a circle and using the interacting ratio of the incident beam to characterize the reflectivity. Since there is an angle between the incident and the reflect beam, only a part of the incident beam actually gets reflected reflected into the PD. And this proportion is, this, this ratio is actually in proportion to the reflectivity. Also, there might be some user-dependent reflectivity variations. This can be corrected by a one-time run, can be corrected by a one-point runtime calibration. Also, there are other problems. So we realize that visible light channels are very busy. There, are, there exist many kind of interferences. First of all, the surrounding light sources may contribute to the RSS as well, and they can be actually much stronger than the desired signal. However, these kind of interference are, interferences are not coherent with our light emission, which means no matter we turn our LED on or off, the, the interference is always there and remains nearly constant. This means that we can modulate our own emission with OK to remove the interference by subtracting the samples obtained, obtained during the on period to, with the samples obtained during the off period. This also, this also helps with energy saving since it offers opportunity to uh, to tackle the light emission. Also, there are background reflections, which is caused by the nearby objects or walking people. 
This kind of interference cannot be removed by modulation since they are coherent with our light emission. However, they are usually slow changing and not very strong, which dis distinguishes it from the signal. Besides the, special besides the special solution we mentioned before as light grooming, we also employ a temporal solution. We dynamic dynamically tracks the background and removes it from the received signal. It works by, distinct, by trying to classify, by trying to tell whether the user's finger is in the working area or not. And when the user's finger, user's finger is absent, it opportunistically updates the background level. This mechanism also helps detect clicks. As a result of the interference cancellation, we can say that although various interference can have uh, very difficult, uh, very different uh, strengths, the signal after cancellation remains consist consistent, which means the interference cancellation is effective in most cases. After this signal processing, the actual localization is very simple. So upon start, the model will generate a lookup look table of expected RSS for each location in the working area. When a sample is available, it is compared to all this RSS, and the location that has minimum RSS error is selected, is selected to be the location of finger. We prototype, we prototype Oculi with the aforementioned 3D printed shroud as well as our Arduino, which drives the LED and the PD and red PDs. The Arduino sends the samples via Bluetooth module to the tablet, and the actual localization algorithm runs on the tablet. We place the tablet, tablet in front of Oculi so we can collect the touch screen traces together with Oculi's traces simultaneously, and so we can compare them. We evaluated Oculi's performance in various ways. First, we try to determine how accurate it, it is across different kind of surfaces. So what we have is, uh, includes black paper, white paper, and glossy glass surfaces. As we can see in the figure, the accuracy remains consistent, and the 90th percentile accuracy is around 1.5 centimeters over all the surfaces. This means that Oculi is not only accurate, it is also consistent across different surfaces. Also, we use the same runtime calibration data to measure the accuracy before and after 10, 10 days. And the result shows that the accuracy did not degrade along with, with time. This also means Oculi is consistent over a long period of time. We also evaluated the application performance of Oculi. We first evaluated the 20K keypad application across seven different users. All of them showed the accuracy of around 90%, and this means Oculi is uh, consistent across different users and can support this kind of keypad application. Also, we evaluated the trackpad performance. On the left, we have a sample traces from Oculi as well as the touch screen. As we can see here, the Oculi's trace does not overlap with touch screen 100% of the time. However, the shape is well preserved, and uh, anybody should be very easily can easily tell that this is a letter J. On the right, we have an uh, evaluation about hand right recognition across three different users. We say that Oculi has an uh, accuracy of over 90%, and uh, the touch screen has an uh, accuracy of about 95% which means Oculi's performance is comparable with capacitive touch screens. As for the energy efficiency, we have two observations. First, most of, uh, of the energy is caused by the light emission. This part, although it's large, can be reduced effectively with duty cycling. Another observation is that the processing actually costs very little power, which, employ, which implies a very low CPU utilization. This means that Oculi can offer smoother UI and better user experience. As a conclusion, our fine-grained light propagation model can enable accurate passive visible light localization. 
We identified multiple types of interference exist in the visible light channel and shows that they can be effectively canceled out for sensing applications. Also, while prototyping and evaluation, we show that visible light channel allows us to achieve centimeter grade passive localization within a compact system. So that concludes my talk. Thanks for listening, and uh, I would be glad to answer your questions.